We're very happy to have our next guest join us on the program. It is Malrat. Welcome back. Thank you. In San Francisco. Excited to be here. Yes, we were just chatting off camera about you staying in Oakland last night. Yeah. So you're getting a feel for the Bay Area. I like yeah. that. Yeah, Oakland was cool. Yeah, anything that popped out that you kind of noticed or anything? We had a really good dinner at this place called Solely Vegan and it was like vegan soul food. Mm. And it was like, you could feel that it was made with love, which oh. is really nice. How is everybody tonight? Congrats on uh, all the success that you've been having so far. Thank you. I, last year was just like, I think, a really good year for you, right? It was really exciting. Yeah, so much cool stuff happened. Yeah, last uh, you were here in the Bay, you were opening for Maggie Rogers. Yeah. You had an EP that you released, and, and to backtrack a little bit, you played South By. When I say all these things, does it really hit you? Have you had a chance to reflect? On oh, it's like all been so busy. It's just been like, yep, this is the next thing we're doing. Like, it hasn't seemed like some crazy thing. It's just like, just like lots of little bits of hard work, yeah, you know? So yeah. it's all really exciting, but it's like just lots of stuff happening. Was it uh, overwhelming or what was that experience like playing South By? Because I'm, I'm sure you've oh, heard things. Yeah, it was like non-stop. It was so busy. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. My favorite part of it was seeing Billie Eilish play. Mm. And yeah, my least favorite part of it was all the people in the crowd who were like in the industry just going like this, like <laughs> watching the whole show, like standing at the back of the room, just like giving you like judgy eyes. <laughs> right, right, right. I, I, I can imagine what it's like. Yeah. Right? And that's it's, probably something that you could, you probably have in common with someone like Billie Eilish, where it's like you're young, you're just getting into the industry and folded arms and yeah. it's like impressed me. <laughs> it's so different to playing a headline show back home where everybody just wants to dance. Like there's heaps of young kids like looking up at you singing all the words and you get over there and it's like no reaction a lot of the time. But it's good because it learn you learn to put on a good show regardless of what you think the audience is like. Uh, I wanted to talk about that because you definitely have just burst into the scene with within the last few years, let's say, right? A couple of EPs under your belt. When you were first getting into music and play, fooling around on GarageBand with these beats and things, did you even think about what type of live show you're going to do? Um, no, like when I'm making songs, I have never thought ahead as to what it's gonna be like live. And especially when I started, like, it was more, yeah, I didn't really know how to translate it to a live thing. Cause like, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a natural performer, like it's a learned thing for me. Whereas like songwriting is natural for me. Um, yes, yeah, so I never really thought about how it was gonna translate, but it's been cool that it, we've figured it out. What would you say is your go-to kind of pillars of a live show? I don't know, it's like, I, I think you have to, like listen to the room, well, not like the room, but like gauge. Read the, read yeah, the read the read the room and like. Although maybe that's not true because you're meant to change the way that they feel. So it's like, but first you have to understand where they're at if you want to change the way that they're feeling. So that's kind of important to me. When writing songs now versus when you first started, uh, where you take little pockets of observations and your thoughts on how relationships are, are and things like that. Uh, how, how has that changed or has it changed? How have, you, how have you evolved as a songwriter as you've gotten older? Um, I feel like the most obvious way to me that I've grown is as a producer because um, with that first EP, it was, it was mostly singing on beats that were already made completely. And then with the last EP, In the Sky, it was like I co-produced everything and sat down with my friends and we made it all from scratch. So I feel like I've gotten a lot more confident as a producer and also as a songwriter, but it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly how so my songwriting has changed. I think it's just like I've gotten more confident in it and I don't really know how else it's changed. Yeah, well, yeah. it's definitely a marked difference. If you listen to In the Sky versus the earlier works, um, it, I, I think it's a fantastic uh, representation of your growth. Thank you. And a lot of notables. We just spoke to the guys of Hippocampus last week who worked with BJ Burton. He's, That's so cool. He's their producer, right? Really? And cool. he worked with you. Yeah. And what they told me about his style of work and, and trying co to collaborate with artists is to take what they do 
and, and elevate it. Yeah. What, what did he do for you? He was so fun. He, um, with him I started my favorite song I've ever made called Make Time. Um, and it's like, it's my least popular song, but it's like, I think it's the best because of the production and he was a big part of that. And like the way it took a couple of days to try and um, get out like the way everything sounded in my head. And he was so good at listening and interpreting what I was saying, like, cause the way the chords were was like a little bit tricky to arrange because of the timing of it and stuff and the structure's not at all a traditional structure so it took like a lot of experimenting and he was just like so open to all of that and also the room that we recorded we recorded in like had so many beautiful synths around and I'd just like stop for a little bit and he would like be playing all these crazy sounds and everything he did sounded beautiful mm. and also he had this amazing amazing vocoder that we used which is my favorite bit wow yes he was like he had all so the toys cool to work for you. with yeah that's so cool that you brought him up I just thought it was a coincidence we literally just spoke to Hippocampus last week yeah. so I was like wait I know BJ Burton that's cool. um, and then last uh, uh, December, it's past uh, December, we spoke to another one of your buddies, uh, Gab, aka <laughs> Japanese Wallpaper. And you know what's funny, because he worked on that song as well. Is there anything in particular that he contributed in terms of um, opening your eyes to production? Well, he... He like has taught me so much. Like when I was kind of learning how to use Ableton, I would like go over to his house and he'd be like, and this is how you do this, and this is how you resample, blah, 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 and was just so patient with all my questions. So he's like really helped me with like, opening my eyes to so many different things but also I've been a fan of his for such a long time like before I knew him and I think he is just so good at creating like the most beautiful music ever I don't if you haven't listened to Japanese wallpaper like you have to check it out he's so good yeah um pulling around is a jam yeah it's so good yeah so good well, we're really excited for your future and uh, really uh, are looking forward to the show tonight and best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Great to meet you. You too. Thank you. Awesome. It is uh, Mallrat and you're watching B-Sides On Air. Oh, yeah.